This is part 5 of C-Sharp interview questions tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what a recursive function is with an example. So, what is a recursive function? A recursive function is a function that calls itself. It's normal for a function to call another function, but if the function calls itself, then that function is called recursive function. Let's look at an example. Let's compute the factorial of a number with and without recursion. First, let's look at computing without recursion. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So here I have a console application. First, let's write a method that's going to compute the factorial for us. Factorial can be quite a big number. So let's make the return type double. And let's call the method factorial. Now we need to provide this method a number for which we want the factorial to be computed. So we are going to pass that as a parameter. If the provided number is 0, we want to return 1 because 0 factorial is 1. On the other hand, if it's not 0, then we need to compute the factorial. And for that purpose, we are going to make use of a for loop. So for int i equals number. So whatever number the user has provided, we are going to start at that number. And while i is greater than or equal to 1, i minus minus. Now to store the factorial, we need a variable. So let's go ahead and create a variable of type double. And let's call it factorial. And let's initialize that to 1. And factorial equals factorial into whatever value we have in this variable i. And finally, let's return the factorial. OK, so very straightforward method. Now, within our main method, let's prompt the user to enter a number. So console.writeLine, please enter a number. So this is going to prompt the user to enter a number at which point we need to read it from the console and to read it from the console we're going to make use of read line method but this method is going to return that number in a string format so we need to convert that to integer so let's use convert class for that purpose convert dot to int 32 okay now let's go ahead and invoke this factorial method. Now look at this. This factorial method at the moment is an instance method, which means we need to create an instance of this class in order to invoke this method. Instead of that, let's make this method static so that we can invoke that without having the need to create an instance of this class. So let's invoke the method and pass the number that the user has entered to this function. And let's store it in a variable of type double. And let's call it factorial. And let's finally print the factorial value on the screen. So console.writeLine factorial of whatever number the user has entered. And how do we get that number? That's going to be in this variable. So let's copy that, convert that to string. So factorial of 3 or 4 or 5, whatever number the user has entered, that is equal to and whatever is the result. And where is the result present in this variable? So let's go ahead and convert that to string. All right. So let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. So factorial, please enter a number. 5, five factorial is 120. So we get the output as expected. So here, we are computing the factorial of a number without recursion. We are using a for loop um, you know, for computing the factorial. Now let us see how to convert this function into a recursive function. So now, when I ask you to compute the factorial of a 4, a four it's 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Okay? Or we can also say 4 factorial is 4 into 4 minus 1. And that multiplied by 4 minus 2 and 4 minus 3, which again should give the same output. Okay, so we're going to compute the factorial like this, which means we're going to call, you know, this function is going to call itself. So first of all, I'm going to get rid of all these lines of code here. So return, what do we want to return? We want to return 
the number itself, that multiplied by the output of whatever this function is going to give. And then here, we're going to subtract 1 from the number. So if we pass 4 first time, so it's going to come and check, is 4 equal to 0? No, so it's going to come here. So 4 multiplied by, and this function is being called again. But look at this, we are subtracting four, you know, 1 from 4 meaning now we are passing a different value for this parameter. So 4 into 3, and then it's going to call itself again. So 4 into 3 into 2, and then it's going to call itself again. But the moment it comes here and checks, OK, if the number is 0, then it's going to break that recursion, and the control will be handed over back to whoever has called this function. So very simple and straightforward recursion example. And let's run this and see if it works as expected. So please enter a number, number 5 factorial of 5 is 120. So it's working in exactly the same way, but this is now a recursive function, a function that calls itself. In our next video, we'll discuss a real-time scenario where recursion can be used. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.